Shapes play a key role when painting. They help us identify the scene we are painting and break down the scene for us to achieve a better composition, a better balance within the scene. We can break these shapes down in terms of value. Identifying and observing the shapes by observing the light. We're painting light. Today I am going to be showing you an example of this from a photo I found over on pexels.com which is a royalty free website and will act as my reference. However, what I am about to explain to you can be applied to every single subject matter, be it out on plain air, in the studio, studying still life, etc. Acrylics I mix as I go along. Now I could add in like a gel or a medium to extend the drying time. I just like to use plain old water and I do keep a spray bottle at the side of me just to spray the palette down. And I've just got used to it. It's just become like second, similar to second nature over years of just practice and working with acrylics. Now this subject matter appears to have more square, rectangular and triangular shapes to it. Now these will become my much larger brush strokes. I can get a lot done quickly just by knowing these shapes. And for that, I'll be using a one stroke flat. Now a flat brush allows me to cover a larger area of the canvas, those larger shapes, more quickly. Remove the illusion of not having enough time. It's awesome just how much can be accomplished with just a few brush strokes. You don't have to particularly overwork the canvas with this brush to make your subject matter more readable. Now you'll see that I've highlighted just a few key areas and these are the lightest parts of the scene. The sky's super washed out. You've got a little building off to the left, which is similar in value in comparison to the house where the middle is just sort of sticking out where them little steps are just to the left of those steps is where the highest of value resides within the scene. So I want to make the center of this house appear three dimensional and by doing that, I've added in the highlights to the left, which I've just mentioned. When painting any shapes, you're painting in two dimensions. And what you're trying to do to that shape is give it the illusion of having a third dimension. Now with shapes, all you have to do is consider width and length. So where I've just positioned my camera now is similar to where I've been showing you guys the process so far. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this camera further back and you'll see how the image appears to be more readable as we come away from it. And this is why it's so important as well that your images read properly. It's important that you maintain a good distance away from the canvas when you're working on it. Because when you look at an image, when you're say walking past, say this size in a gallery, you're not going to be like that. I mean, you might do to see the brush strokes, but to appreciate it, you're going to be more here, if not here. So you can see how just by using bigger brush marks and knowing value, how the piece ties together as a whole. You can see here, I've just kept the basic shapes and I'm only like just over a quarter of the way through this painting now. And even if I come back to here, super far out, you can see it's still readable from afar. It's only when we add value to those shapes, color, texture, knowing our forms properly, is when those shapes give the illusion that they are three dimensional. A shape's boundaries are ultimately defined by other key elements, lines, values, colors, and textures. And by adding them to the shape in turn, can give off the illusion of three dimension in your scene and makes the viewer actually want to step into that scene. So this is where color and value does come into play. So let's say the darkest value is towards the right of this circle. We want to blend the mid value, our mid range, and that becomes our highest key value. I think people have the tendency of overthinking and overworking their paintings. And then they end up with they end up being agitated because they don't achieve the results that they want. Just because they don't know how to simplify things. So a shape will always be just a shape until we know about our value. 
So you can see here I've got dark fading into mid and then you've got, obviously this would be the lightest bit. I could even highlight that with a bit of white if I wanted to go the extra mile. Which just to clarify and give an ultimate example of where I'm going. Standard shape. Illusion of a three dimensional shape. Just by artistic license, my own artistic license, I've made the subject actually appear more darker. But I've kept all the main values from the reference photograph in particular. And that's, that's just personal preference. I mean, I love things that are a bit more darker and quirkier. I, I like to embrace sort of a gothic element whilst ensuring that no details get lost everything still remains as the scene is. It's just got my personal touch on it. You know, I'm not changing the shape of the building. I'm not changing the shape of the path in any particular way. I'm not making the path zigzag. I'm, I'm continuing to elude the viewer's eyes in with that pathway. I'm not breaking any shapes up in the scene. I'm just sheerly sticking to what I know about shapes, form and texture and colour and just all of that I'm taking into consideration whilst applying my own sense of self into the painting. I'm not going to uh, copy exactly the photograph uh, as it is because otherwise there'd be no point in it being a painting and there'd be no expression of myself within the scene. Yeah, yeah.